Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, I guess you know we're very active now. We're getting ready to get into the whole political political situation that we're going to be having here coming up very shortly. We've got the primary that we're going to be looking at, and then right after that, the general. So we're going to be right into it, and hopefully we're all going to be getting out there. And by the way, the first thing I will say to you, get out and vote. Make sure you register to vote. This is a very important election here in the state of Oregon, and, uh, and so it's very, very important that you get involved. Okay? Well, with that, uh, let's say this is what the show is going to be about today. What we're going to do... Uh, uh, we're going to take the first 15 minutes, kind of give you a little update on this whole issue, the Trader Joe's issue. And, um, and then after that, we're going to speak with Steve Buell. Uh, he's a member of the school board, Portland School Board. And uh, he's going to give us sort of an, a field update, if you will, on the, on the present situation at Portland Public Schools and the education across the board, as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, and also, probably talk a little bit about uh, uh, the results of the street, teachers not striking here in the in the in the city city of Portland and what the rationale was that for and and what what would be the benefit if you will in the bottom line is about the kids and their education and so we'll do that with that so with that let me just bring him bring him on in uh, I'm talking about Chad Dednam he's a local developer he's done a number of other things but he's a local developer if you if you're here in the Portland area if you drive here in Northeast Portland Department of Human Services DHS. Uh, he built that. He built that project and several other projects he's developed, if you will, in the years. So I thought it would be a good idea to bring him on and just give us a little update. There's all kinds of chatters about this whole issue of Trader Joe's, uh, what happened to them to a certain degree. Uh, uh, are they not here now? Why are they not here? Are they going to be coming back? Uh, and just what was the dynamics of this whole thing? So, Chad, welcome aboard. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Appreciate it very much. Oh, going on. Let us know. What's up? Well, you know, I, I think um, as well as, I don't know if you knew this, but... Uh, I was president of the King Naval Association as well as president of the NAACP uh -huh. when this d project was put together with Ray and T Gina, the first phase. Who's that now? Ray and Gina uh, Woolley, Ray Lurie and Gina Woolley, when they did the first phase of, of, of Vanport, that was the second phase in Trader Joe's. Um, so, so I, you know, and, and I live in that neighborhood. I live pro maybe a uh, half block away from there. So uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's something close to where I live. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a Walnut Park, you know, and, I, and, and I've been there for 30-some plus years. Um, I've raised a family, still have member, still live there and whatnot. The interesting part about what I find about this whole thing, I, I believe Trader Joe's will come back. I'm an optimist. But I think I've talked to a number of the neighbor, neighbors. The, uh, they're excited about them coming, and, and um, a lot of the political machinations that took place are, are losing its steam. I think the the PALF is uh, really has some real difficulties. I think they stepped out of their, their norm. Their, their th From your perspective, who are they? And what, well, the what, Portland, what are they for? The, the, What's the purpose? Well, I think it's the, called the what? Uh, Portland uh, African American Leadership Forum. Mm -hmm. I think they got confused. In what way? Well, they're a think tank. And they, and they became activists you know, as opposed to giving information and providing stuff to people. I think they use the old model that used to work with the Northeast Economic Development Alliance. They used that model, and I think it was an outdated model, particularly in our neighborhood, that has seen tremendous... What do you mean by outdated model? What model was it? Well, you know, historically, where all the nonprofits got together in, 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 in our community, and they created the Northeast, Development, uh, Northeast Economic Development uh, Alliance, which... All the nonprofits came together to speak at one voice. Like whom? Um, Black United Fund, um, Northeast Development Corporation, um, 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 Minority uh, Sam Brooks Organization, uh, Urban League, almost all the leadership, Albina Ministerial Alliance, uh, Self Enhancement, all those groups came together mm -hmm. to, to try to create a, f a fulcrum, if you will, uh, to make change. Uh, in the community, I, I, they had some its pluses. One of the downsides it really did affect the private side of the equation because mm -hmm. it was hard as a business person to talk to issues that related exactly to you because that was the leadership, and everybody went to that to ask the questions, uh, and and should have been speaking to to people who had uh, okay. expertise okay. in that in a given area. Okay, but I, I think uh, um, and so that that's why I said that leadership model it was outdated, uh, outdated model. I think now it's, it's, it's to be service-orientated as opposed to leadership 
uh, and I think they, they were outdated. Uh, and I think they, they went to direct action much too soon. They didn't do all the due diligence necessary to make sure that they were talking about community needs. And when I say community needs, that's not black community. It is the community. It happens to be, you know, some black people live in that neighborhood. I'm a black person that live in that neighborhood. But there's a community concern. And I've always focused on community, whether that be whoever. If you live in a certain area, then you have neighborhood associations, you have black leadership, all those kind of things, which is a service model. And I think, unfortunately, like I said, they were a think tank that got uh, carried away with some of the, you know. But were they in communication with this, uh, with the deal, if you will, at PDC from the standpoint that um, uh, the, the property was going to be sold and this Majestic came in and basically was going to sell the property, G.I. Joe's was going to, be, I'm here, but Trader Joe's was going to basically rent the property and that um, uh, uh, there was going to be a, an African-American contractor that was going to build Trader Joe's and. All that kind of thing. I, mean. I, 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 think, I, I think, once again, um, one of the problems I think has been a historical problem, as I've been perceived, once again, it's my perception, mm -hmm. but it became the reality. I think a lot of times people look at leadership and they believe it's, it's monolithic, as opposed to if you're in education, you're a leader in education. Mm -hmm. If you're in early childhood development, you're a leader in that. Uh, if, you, uh, uh, have, uh, if you're a minister, you have certain leadership in that area. One of the problems I think happened in our community particularly, people who had leadership in other areas or service in other areas were not discounted because they were not quote unquote the leadership that went and talked to the establishment, whatever that establishment might be. And I think that that model really created a lot of problems for people because, for example, in the development business, um, it's, it's totally different than somebody in the construction business, even though they're related. If you're in the real estate business, it's different than a developer even though a developer might move all the and then the financial institutions, each and every one of these publics hall, these publics have a different energy and you have to integrate them all. Well, if you're outside that sphere and you're in education, for example, or you're a social worker or a, a spiritual leader, you, you, you don't touch none of those publics. Mm -hmm. And even though we're all impacted by each other's activity, uh, it, it's an integrated, it's almost like a, uh, like, a, like, a, like a ballet. You have to be aware of each of the movements to make it work. And I think, unfortunately, uh, for PALF, I think their intentions were good. Their motives, I think, were good. But the outcome was disastrous because mm -hmm. I think this lacked the understanding or the um, flow of how things occur. And I think, I, think, um, I think that's now has become quite evident. I understand there's been a great deal of... Uh, of people who are leaving PALF who were involved in various organizations because um, it went in a direction that was not constructive to their own personal Who was business. the makeup of that? Any ideas or some thoughts of the, some thoughts that have been about the makeup of that, that organization? Well, I think they went to all the major groups in, in the community, like the Urban League, NAACP, um, um, uh, the, uh, uh, Maxine Fitzpatrick and her organization, I, I can't be blocking up, PCRI, uh, Self-Enhancement, uh, how about a ministerial alliance? Hmm. I think all so those all, those, all those groups were in, were representative, and I think each, from what I'm understanding, once again, I was never invited to to the uh, meet, meeting because I don't view myself as a leader. I view myself more of a servant. I, I try not to get caught up in that leadership thing. But hmm. the interesting part of that that point was that I think that they their intentions were good to try to create some focal points, but some of the issues they were talking about were dated. And frankly, I still am confused, and I've been in the real estate development business 25, 30 years. I don't know what gentrification is. And I've been all over the East Coast. I've been all over uh, the country in California. I'm still perplexed by the notion of gentrification when it's about who owns the property. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. The bottom line is about who owns the property and who has the capability to develop it. And, and, and believe it or not, property follows where the money is. I don't care where you're at. No, and that system is never going to really change. I, I think that in the case of New York City, where they have rent uh, 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 controls and whatnot, that stems the tide to some degree. But you still have to be in that area to be able to do that. And I, I don't know if we're going to be able that sophisticated in, 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 out in the West here for that to occur. Mm -hmm. You know, when it, when it was first announced, sort of like uh, 
PDC, the other urban renewal, if you will, initiators, sure. if you will, on that line, and the announcement was made, you know, as I indicated before, that uh, the contractor was identified, the purchaser was identified, the the uh, e the eventual occupant of that piece of property, uh, e.g., I Joe, I mean, Trader Joe's, Joe's is going to be there aspect of You're it. Dating yourself. And uh, <laughs> so you ask yourself the question, and that's normal procedure with PDC. Was that a good deal or not? Did what 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 happened with that one? I'm confused by the hullabaloo because. We even announced today there's an ad that comes on the paper, um, on the TV, talking about New York open for business. It's the same kind of toolkit. Mm -hmm. New York City, yeah. state of Washington uses, state of California, Texas is, is, is probably the, is the most famous for having this toolkit kit where they bring people in with tax incentives, making sure the properties are, are, are uh, under market value, and that way they can use that on the other side when they do the tax yeah. Cre yeah. Uh, credits or whatnot. Uh, it, it, these are just tools. And unfortunately, I think. The folks reading this, well, you know, it's, 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 the property's worth this amount of money. Why'd you sell for that amount of money? Yeah. Because if they didn't do it that way, it'd have been difficult. They, within one and a half years, uh, my calculation, and, I, and it might be even less than that, that they would have recouped the money they they on that property through taxes and various other kinds of ways of revenue enhancement that the state or the city or the county has. Mm -hmm. So that it's it's a it's 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 a it's a it's a sum plus, not a zero sum. Mm -hmm. So it was a good deal. I think so, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, give me one like that. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd love to have one yeah, like that. Yeah, I, unfortunately yeah. for me, I was never able to get that kind of support mm -hmm. from from the pr public sector. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I don't behoove anyone who has ability and the political connections or, or the social standing because the social issue, again, mm -hmm. how these things occur. You know, as I think about um, the way the paper had laid it out, it showed some sense of some perception of if you weren't part of the system, some sense of conflict of interest. It indicated that the, one of the board members, who happened to be an African American, uh, she, uh, this this particular person also was a, uh, I guess, a vice president, and in, in, that was her brother, if you will, that was going to be the contractor to build that particular project. I mean, it, I saw no problem with that. Yeah, right. As a matter yeah. of fact, I know the people personally, and I have the utmost respect for the young lady who went to Oregon with my daughter. I've mm -hmm. known of this family for some time. Mm -hmm. They're excellent people. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, he's a pretty good reputable deal. Oh no, no, he. Trust me, as a as a contractor, I would use him mm -hmm. because he is a good one. I, I've known of him for years, years, years. Matter of fact, it's Anthony Jenkins who introduced me to him, mm -hmm. um, 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 and I've been aware of these, these this family. I went to developments out in Gresham. They had a real nice development out there because we were thinking about doing something with them. We just never could put it together. But I have the utmost respect for that okay. for the family. Okay. And I guess the other thing is the bottom line is that uh, uh, it's one of the mayor's agency responsibility, uh, you know, uh, uh, bureaus, if you will, that he's responsible for, PDC. I'm just saying. Well, and well, this, well you know, as you know, Charlie has always Charlie's had, not, he's had a, he's deep, a very deep and very commit, committed. Well, well also committed. he has a, a deep development background. Right. Uh, matter of fact, uh, you know, some of the things that happened in Portland was because his, his uh, mentorship on the city council mm -hmm. to help like frame this new era of mm -hmm. Portland development, Pearl, the Pearl districts, various districts, like, 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 like some of the right. well, so especially the trolley line that yeah. went oh, yeah. that came yeah. from south, uh, from northwest to uh, uh, yeah. on one side, the northwest mm -hmm. side to southwest side, the Portland State route. I mean, he, he's you know he's quite a. a uh, a talented man. Mm. And plus, the fact he had served before, so he, he's very familiar with the with the issues. Well, well, and particularly, like I said, he has a deep development background. Mm -hmm. Probably the only other mayor I think that had that much understanding was Bud Clark. Mm -hmm. And 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 that was, as you know, it's a great period for development in Portland. He's a marine, you know, a farm marine. Well, well, well. You, you, but you, you but but that. whoop 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 whoop. <laughs> I like Bud. Good, I mean, good, I good. had a lot of respect for good, Bud, good, good, good. as well as Charlotte. So, Chad, what, what, what should the P, what the P E L F or is that the group? Uh, 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 PALF. PALF and the community. What, what, should, what should they do at this point in time? What do you think? I think they should, they should stand down and go back to a think, a think tra ta uh, tight tank mentality, provide information and data and research and perspectives and, and, and maybe even promote the ideas, but let the various organizations and specific people who have uh, charge to do what they're supposed to do. I think they, there's a role, but I think it has to be a much more less mode role that they should, they should not become activists. I think mm -hmm. that was their problem. They, they became, you know, um, too involved and yeah. went to direct action. Okay. And I think even when 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 when, when um, uh, Bernice King was here, mm -hmm. she talked about that she thought it was premature for them to do direct action. You negotiate, negotiate, and then you negotiate before. When you go to that direct action mode, that's the last mode. That sounds good. Chad, it's been great. <laughs> I'm sure the community hopefully will get a better feel of what where we where we were and uh, 
and kind of get it some sense of direction of where we should be going and et cetera. So this has been really great. Okay. Well, you know, we, we're, okay. we're, we're a maturing community. I appreciate that. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Massar. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're a nice guy. Well, folks, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with our second segment. Okay? What do you think? He's still on. I don't know. Okay, good. That was good. That was good. Stick around. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. back folks again i'm bruce Bouchard, your host here at oregon voters digest and here's our second segment of the show as you note uh, and to my far right and to your to your left on the screen steve steve Buell. you've seen steve here many times over he is kind of the the education czar if you will within this area i mean he is the solution to the problems that we have here as far as i'm concerned in portland public schools and and i'm just so excited about the fact that he's part of this establishment i.e uh, PCM, Portland Community Medium. Uh, so what we're going to do is at uh, this particular time around, he's going to give us sort of an update on all the activities since he last been here. Uh, in regards to, uh, as you know, that we were looking at the possibility of a strike, school strike here at Portland Public Schools and and uh, a number of other issues and whatever. And then also he's going to probably give us some feel in terms of where is the Portland Public Schools going to be going at this point in time. As you know, he is also a school board member probably one of the most active school board members that I've ever known here in the in the history of the of this particular board. I don't have to even go to the meetings anymore. Steve is there. I mean, I appreciate that very, very much. He's brought along with him another uh, uh, an interesting guest, a very solid, very active, just kind of an individual, a gentleman by the name of Paul Anthony. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to give him now the, the pleasure of introducing Paul, and then we'll just get right into the show. Steve. Well, but I asked Paul to come. He's really an activist in the schools. He's really following things. He pays, he pays attention. He, yeah. He's a bright guy, and he's a parent and comes out of North Portland and is, is in on top of stuff. One of the things we're talking about out there is a, the Roosevelt redesign, and he's really on top of that, so I thought it'd be great to bring him along. Oh, good. It's really right, nice to have him here with us. That'd be great. So what I'll do, Paul, why don't you just spend a couple of moments and, and let the let the viewing audience know, who, look, get a little bit more about your background and what are your feelings, what are your interests, oh, and this, that, and the other. Sure. Yeah. Well, the most important thing is that I have three children. Uh, the oldest is a freshman at Benson and the two youngest are in the sixth grade at Beach. All three of them have gone through the Spanish Immersion Program at Beach, mm. and uh, I'm a big, big proponent of the Immersion Programs. They're absolutely fabulous. My children have done so well with them. Um, I'm also, I've been very, very pleased with Benson High School. Benson what, what has been terrific. Oh, like, like, you know, like, well, are you from, from Oregon, from Portland? Or? Well, I was born in Spokane. Okay. Uh, and Met, met my wife in school in Walla Walla, okay. and uh, we moved here. My wife's a Lutheran minister, uh, Portsmouth Trinity, uh, uh, by the University of Portland. Uh, when we came to Portland, I uh, worked for eight years for Harold Schnitzer, uh, was his personal assistant, and now I'm the CFO at a financial services company. Fantastic. Shannon well, Pratt Valuations. Well, welcome aboard. Thank we you very that. much. Happy okay. to be here. Thank you. Well, you know, Steve's going to give us a little update now and bring us up to date and as far as your activities at Portland Public Schools and your school board activities. Well, we, we finished the contract after uh, 10 months, 
eight months of the school board fooling around, actually. In what way? Uh, well, they just never really would put people at the table who were, they wouldn't have, didn't have the superintendent at the table, you know, no school board members at the table, and so we spent about eight months. No school kinda, board members at the table? No, they never yeah. were. And, and they, we spent about eight months kind of fooling around, really, and then all of a sudden it got down towards the end, and the, and the teacher said, hey, we're going to strike if you don't get it together here and we finally did get it together and we ended up with the contract after all the teachers had picked up their boxes and moved out of the school and everybody was angry and mad and upset uh, but we did finally settle it up first uh, first off any idea of how much did this cost if you will the the, the, you the, mean the, the cost payers, of the, the cost of this whole that whole period of, of this and that and this and that. How much did that cost us taxpayers? I don't think that really payers? cost a lot, but what it did do, what it did do is it stopped people from working on what they should have been working on. In, this, in the last couple of months, the school system in, in uh, down at the BESC, you know, the, the administration building, it pretty much we pretty much shut down. We weren't able to do anything. Did you? I mean, nothing. Basically, and so for a couple of months, we just shut the whole place down practically. Mm -hmm. Nothing got done. I mean, you know, something that was highlighted during that particular time was the was the consultant. That was something that was always in the paper, et cetera, et cetera. That was quite expensive. Okay, three hundred and fifty thousand. Three hundred and fifty thousand. Three hundred sixty. Three hundred sixty thousand over two years. Over a two year yeah, period. Fifteen thousand a month. Fifteen thousand dollars a month uh -huh. for this consultant aspect of it. Okay, uh -huh. so that, and like I said, that, it was pretty expensive. Well, we that never time. really had people at the table who were educators. It was a really difficult situation. Uh, Carol Smith, of course, is a superintendent. Of course, she's pretty knowledgeable education-wise. But it's been a long time since she was out in that classroom teaching. It was different twenty years ago than it is now. And, and also, but we did. But the other people bargaining, they weren't educators. They were a couple, uh, the, the consultant, was Yvonne Deckard, was not an educator. Sean Murray is new. He came over from this city. Uh, Brock Logan is not an educator. So we didn't really have, we had people working with them like principals and so forth. But the people really in charge and doing the bargaining weren't educators. And that slowed things down because the teachers came in with a plan that was all based around children and education for children and we couldn't evaluate it well because we didn't have educators on our team really that were evaluating right. that. Yes, the thing is, Paul, jump in if you want. Oh, if you got jump any, in any time. Between Bruce and I, it's hard yeah, to get yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, you have to jump jam in, right in there, Paul. you know. I'm going to throw one thing down and let Paul Kick just Bruce jump right on this. You know, the thing that has always bothered me about the school board and the whole issue, that whole issue is that who represents us, the public? You know, point? You, you know, you would think that the people who are representing the public are those elected officials who are sitting on the school board. They should be calling the shots. Mm -hmm. But for some strange, in fact, I'll ask you the question: Who's who's actually representing the public? I.e., in the negotiations or in uh, just across in the board? Yeah, in general, who represents the public here? The voting, the voting. Public? I've been fighting for a long time trying to get the school board to work in a way that's that's more representative, more open, more transparent. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a lot of trouble. They want to go in the back room and do all the business back there, basically. But at the end of the day, who represents the, the, the voting public? Well, I've sat there now for several months, since July 1st. Who do you think? It's a heck of a question, Bruce. Wow. <laughs> I don't think you really... Ha the, the school board's supposed to, but they're not really doing the job of actually representing the public, because if they would, things would be transparent and open that are still not transparent and open. Because mm -hmm. your thought is the school board members are supposed to be representing the public and then the teachers are supposed to be representing the kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, we've got a successful program. Paul, yes. any, any no, thoughts about that? That's that absolutely true, yes. That's how it should work. That's not how it's working. Not, it's not working that way. What, no. do you, what do you think? Any ideas and any thoughts about why do you think it's not working? Uh, or if not that, improving the system or whatever? Well, it's like you said at the very beginning. Yeah. We've only got one school board member, mm -hmm. this right. gentleman right That's here, right. who's active and who's involved and who's really interested in representing the public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, I'm afraid it's just that simple. Yeah. Yeah. And to, to get back to your original question about cost, yeah. you know, exactly. it's been a huge opportunity cost. An awful lot of important work has not gotten done. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to have to happen at the last possible minute. Mm -hmm. 
and especially when you're dealing with construction, like they are with the bond build-out, oh. that's the way mistakes mm. happen. That's Bit the way time. expensive mistakes yes. happen. And then it's an enormous loss of goodwill. Mm. Mm. And restoring that goodwill in the public is going to take an awful lot of work mm -hmm. and an awful lot of time. Mm -hmm. And then that last question I would ask again, mm -hmm. going the Steve aspect of it, how, in regards to now you've settled this whole deal, how much of a benefit will this have on the education of our kids? One comment Straight first. Up. I think Curler does a pretty good job. Curler, who are you talking about? Tom Curler was yes, on the school board. Okay, kind of, okay. Yeah, okay. All right, Curler. Okay, Tom. Okay. I know that uh, uh, that Paul thinks so, too. Uh, yes, that is they, great. Uh, okay. and, and, and to some degree, I haven't had to fight much with Bobby Regan. She's kind of... Hmm? Ben, she'll she'll listen. We we come down in different places, but she's okay with that, and I'm okay with that. That's how it's supposed to work, right? It's not other for people that come down in different places, and then instead of allowing you to really become involved and and listen to kind of what you have to say, and that's where the problem is. Okay, but you got but, the settlement. Okay, so you got the how, settlement. What is it going to do to help these kids out? As far as how are you going to address it, it, all these failures and. Uh, dropout rates, all those things. It all comes down in a way for what you're going to benefit out of the uh, settlement to that workload committee. A lot of that stuff's not in it. I mean, the children aspect of it, it this is a contract between the teachers who are trying to set their working conditions and the district who are trying to decide how much to pay them and what the working conditions they think it should be. The children kind of... The children, in a way, got lost because when the when the teachers tried to bargain about the children's conditions, mm -hmm. the school board refused to do that. The school board? The school board and administration. We refused to bargain on that because we said, we don't have to bargain on that, so we won't. But the one thing that came out of it that's really sounds doesn't sound but is real child oriented is the workload committee. They set up a committee to decide upon the workload for teachers, workload being kids in your class, total numbers of kids. We think, well, you got 30 kids in the class. That's a lot. We Everybody sees that, but the total number is real important too. Like if you're an English teacher and you have 180 kids and you're correcting their essays, think of 180 essays to correct if it takes you a few minutes on each. I mean, you're in tens of hours to do it. So that's an important issue. But there's all these other issues that are out there like what tests you give in your classroom and how much time that takes, how you're supposed to write out your lesson plans, all these other things that are important that t steal time, not just from teachers, but when you steal time from teachers, you also steal it from the children because the teachers are the people who are giving their time to the children. And if you limit their time, then that limits the time that the, they can spend with kids. So what's the problem? And it so, should be the teacher's call. I mean, well, well, what, yeah. what's the problem? Well, it's the pro Administration? Uh, I think it's a lack of understanding of how it all works. And a kind of, in education, there's this thing kind of where you don't want to admit you make a mistake. And so it's hard to change anything. So they go out with a recommendation, send out the recommendation, say on something even in the community, or and, and then they'll have people respond. But it's after you make a recommendation, like having a house built. Somebody comes in and says, "I don't like the bathroom now." Well, and you got to really rip stuff. It's really hard to change it. You want to change it as you go along. So you want to include teachers and parents and other community people. And students, really, in a way now, some of those students you, you want to include, while you're setting up, the de creating the decision, creating the recommendation, not afterwards. And we keep wanting to do it afterwards. And so one of the fights is, when do you involve teachers and how much? Well, you ought to involve them a lot and early on. Mm -hmm. It's simple, and we don't. We don't involve them much, and we don't involve them early on. We give them the recommendation. That's what's happened out at... at uh, Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Paul, what do you no. think in, in, in terms you, you were looking at this this show too, I'm sure you oh, yes. like, like all of us for that matter, yes. taxpayers and like. But you had kids in school, you have kids in the school. Oh, yes. Uh, what do you feel about what was happening? Well, in the I, results? I certainly agree with what Steve has said so far. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, getting back to an earlier question you asked, besides representing the public, the school board also needs to be representing the teachers. Mm -hmm. And in particular, on funding and on the mandates that come down from the state. And if the teachers don't know that the board has their back, they start to feel very, very vulnerable. 
and there starts to be a lot more fear, a lot more distrust. Steve. Anxiety. More anxiety. Anxiety is a darn good word. Mm -hmm. Steve is the only member of the board, aren't you, who goes down in lobbies in Salem? You're no, doing? I think they, they do. They, they do? There's okay. people go down and lobby. But yeah. I know that you were and For different very, things, though. Very different things. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, right, right. Different right, things. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty, I'm, you know, and we've talked on this show about the stuff I do with Oregon Save Our Schools and, uh, and uh, the destruction coming out of the State Department that went through the OEIB, the Governor's Committee and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did the guy, I thought maybe the OEA didn't support the governor. Was that yesterday? They didn't? I don't think they, mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. they did. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, he is actually the superintendent now. He is He's the, the superintendent. He's the superintendent. Yeah. 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 Did he agree with the with the results, if you will, of this strike? I mean, oh, who would know? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I huh? don't know. One of the things the school board kind of wanted to be independent. They really weren't listening to people outside that much in terms of, like, the mayor. In some school districts, the mayor will come in and have a big... Right, right. And mm -hmm. we're going, we can do this. And, and we did do it. Um, tore up the city in the process, but we did do it. But you know, the, again, the public, you know, the public is always questioning the whole issue of failure rate, ESL, you know, the, you, yeah. you see all these things on the front end aspect of it. So what's the real, I mean, the whole idea is that that's what the school board, that's their job, if you will, to kind of filter through this stuff and define it and come up with some ideas, how, what impact is this going to have on the kids? But at the same time, hey, the voting public, the paying public out there wants to know. And the parents wants to know. Cause I mean, little John and little Mary's coming home, and are they there? I mean, I'm looking at the report cards, and they're not graduating. What's going on here? So oh, those are the things that were being addressed. Uh, that, that's really what, what what the public is. Fair? Is that is that fair? Yeah. Oh fair yeah, that's fair. Right. So no, it's fair. <laughs> so that's what I was thinking. That's, that's Wait, what the strike a, was supposed to be. We only have an hour, forty-five minute show. We yeah, needed uh, we needed six or ten or twenty hours to really get into that. A lot of that is what's coming down in the mandates. Let me give you just one real quick example. There's a guy by the name of Coleman who set up the uh, the Common Core curriculum. He's very influential, which went out to 45 states. Common Core, what do you Common mean? Common Core, I mean, it's, a, it's a new set of standards. Standards of what? Standards that tell you basically what you should be teaching, what types of things you should be teaching, and how kind of how you should be teaching them in a way. But it's a set of standards. And so the guy who, and, and it works out real good for the people who make money off of it, who sell the tests, which I've talked to, we've talked about this. They sell the tests yeah, and the consultants yes. come in. They money. sell the and they sell the <laughs> they sell the worksheets to help you do it. Okay, so Common Core curriculum is coming across is coming across forty five states. Forty five states took it because they got a lot of money for taking it. That was the reason. And you got out of the AYP where you're supposed to have a hundred. So Oregon is one of the common core. Oregon's one of the yes. yeah. How so much are this, we paying for it? A lot of money. How much are we paying for here in Portland it's Public millions. Schools? How much are we doing for Portland? Well, we I, should know I, that. I, I will eventually. I'm hoping to get that eventually. But you don't, I, you the budget's coming that? up. The budget's coming up. I'm going to ask for that. Yeah. You mean they don't yeah. share that with you? Well, it doesn't really. It, they don't really break it out by testing yeah. and stuff necessarily. Well, who's but running the, the schools? But I mean, the, uh, I mean, it ain't me. Steve, the, see, I'm uh, having some problems uh, here. The taxpayers are So the Common Core stuff, comes in. Steve, who's running the schools? Yeah, right. It's not me. The Common Core. Who's running the schools, Steve? Basically, the <laughs> superintendent and the two superintendent. The superintendent she works the four for you guys. On the, she works for you guys who represent well, us. Yeah, but the four people on the board don't vote the same way that so I. So the superintendent of the public school, Carolyn Smith, runs people. the school. And the four people on the school and board, the four particularly people. the two by the two chair people, the co-chairs, Greg Belisle and and. Uh, Greg Blau. Now, who is he? Greg Blau is a co-chair. Co-chair. He's one of the four. Pamela Knowles. Yeah, but he's one of the two. She's one of the two. And they run, basically run the school. They run the school. Pretty much. Okay, so that's what the failure. Place. That's okay, the problem now, we're having. Uh, it, well, in a way, it is because they're not involving everybody, but that's not the point. point is, here's this guy that comes in, and he's very involved in the Common Core, which is making hundreds of millions of dollars for big corporations. And they like it. So, but they got a little problem because the Common Core goes out fine in the poor kids' schools, but because they'll run it at them because they're not passing the test. But you go into the more well-to-do kids' schools, they don't care that much about the Common Core because the kids are passing the test fine and they're good education. The best education in America is as good as any education in the world, no matter what anybody. Well, the parents are paying the teacher. They put more money in the school. But it's not just that. It's the whole thing. So how do you get? If you're the guy, how do you get the Common Core to go be 
be uh, important to the more well-to-do neighborhoods. How do you do that? What the guy does, he goes down, takes over the SAT. He's now the head of the SATs, which everybody cares about because they think they want their kid to score good in the SATs to go to college. And in some colleges, it's all about the SATs. So he takes over the SATs and changes the SATs, and he now inter, kind of interlocks the SATs in the Common Core. So now the SATs are going to be based a lot on the Common Core. Now all those well-to-do people, and they got to start worrying about the Common Core. So now not only do they have the poor schools, which are worrying about it because they don't want to get closed down, basically. There's a system where they actually close them down. And now he's also got the well-to-do schools, too. Hmm. So know, now he's got all the schools doing the Common Core, and Pearson's making a fortune. And now they're not going to just... They're also going to get... By the things that help them, the other the other things, bring in the consultants and stuff for that. So you know, you know it's something. It, it almost sounds like as if um, the public reacted, as you know, to the CRC, Columbia River Cross. It's just like this. Just same like this concept. Same, same concept. concept same exactly. concept. Mm -hmm. So what basically the public did said, okay, fine. You know, we're going to get rid of some of this leadership stuff. That's how they got rid of it. So in yep. essence, bottom line, your solution, Steve, is that you need to get rid of some of that four, that four here on the school board. Well, we need some more responsible people. You yeah, but the bottom the line, up that, in a way. but the way the structure is in terms of getting people to replace these people is such that it, it's the areas is districtized. We've talked about this before, and we've argued at this point. It's all districtized. Everybody's got it, but you have to run citywide. Yep. Oh yeah. It's so a you can't win. Can't it's a major, major problem. It's a so problem to I win. Think, you can win. What? You can win. You can't win unless you got I'm the sitting, money. Who's going to win? I'm sitting here uh, having won. But <laughs> you, you got, I got lucky. Th that, was know, coup. Got lucky. that was a coup. That was a coup here at the Oregon Voters yeah, Digest and Steve right. Buell. That was the coup. And you're exactly there and we're happy. Exactly. And we need more yeah. Steve Buells on there. I don't know about that, but we do. No, no, it was we, a coup. We need, right. no, we, it was a coup, okay? Yeah. It was a CRC coup that we did on there, okay? So we basically, we're right back to the same. Because, you know, really, it's a very serious situation. Because in all due respect, let's say poor neighborhoods of this, that, and the other, they don't have, if you will, the capacity of the monies, they are unemployed, et cetera, et cetera, to put the monies into the schools. Yep, there's right. not enough. So they got to be smart money. about it. But the bottom line, we already pay taxes. Yep. It goes down to the state, and they say, okay, fine, it's $12,000 per head per kid. And it goes back to the schools. You count the numbers, and someone who's responsible is supposed to spend the goddamn dang money right such that they got, the, they got the teachers that are going to be able to teach. Right I mean, right down the line. So mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a problem. Now, in the rich area, if you will, they basically add more dollars, if you will, to the $12,000 per head. Fair? That's yeah, really what it's happens. not quite 12, but it's, yeah, but, but my right. point they it, add, it, yeah, right. They add money, and some they of their schools then get and that's, more programs. In essence, they're parents, mm -hmm. too, and yeah. they're very sensitive mm -hmm. about their kids. So my mm -hmm. point is, how are we going to be able to respond, if you will, to those folks who don't have that extra cash? In fact, those people who are paying extra cash shouldn't be. The formula is twelve thousand dollars. Everybody should be paying, basically doing the same reading, writing, and arithmetic. Basically, uh, having trade schools. We don't have any trade school in your Portland public schools. They're outside Benson. of the area, but there's nothing here within the Portland public Benson. schools. Benson, Benson. there is no, Benson. one. Yeah. What oh, about yeah. the rest I mean, of the it's folks? That's pretty good. What about I mean, the rest? No, of them? that's what we're working on. Let's we're talk working, about it. What do you mean? We're working, working on, on the trade. We're, how? We're in what way? The well, they're building. They're building, redoing schools, redoing Roosevelt, and redoing Franklin, and we're fighting to get space into those schools set aside for vocational ed, which is okay, yeah. called CTE now. They even CTE. Call it what, what, CTE. What does that mean, CTE? Uh, I see, I see T Career trade. and technical Career education. And technical right. education. So okay, well. So, they're trying to, so we're, fi we're in a fight right now trying to get 12,000 or 10,000 square feet into there because mm -hmm. if, the, if you put the space in, they're going to have to fill it, right? Sure. If you put... 10,000 feet there for CT. They're going to have to put CT programs in. So putting those in, and it has to do, and there, there's a big fight now whether or not how much you have at Franklin and how much you have at Roosevelt right now when they're building these two schools. The Roosevelt guy here, you have 6,000 square yep. feet at Roosevelt and 10 or 12, I think they had 17, I think, at Franklin. So Paul, what does that mean to you in terms of is CT, whatever Oh, what does that mean? Talk, that means talk to us. that means promise for the future. Promise for the future. That, that means fabulous career. Okay. A good life. Okay. Productive life. Okay. Fulfilling life. Okay. 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 It's great. It also means that you don't have to go into the trades if you go through that. Hmm. Means terrific success at science and at math. Means that you can go on to college. 
and become a Cracker Jack engineer. Hmm. You can be a fabulous scientist. You get all kinds of opportunities. Hmm. Opportunity is really what it boils down to. Tell me this. Are they going to standardize those trades so that all the schools are going to have app? Because a lot of times, you know, and actually in the well-to-do schools, that's going to be, they know exactly what trade they need. <laughs> Yeah, and and what about those? What about the poor school kids? Uh, well, we're, are they going to have the same standard trades uh, like the rest of the school is going to be all in one? Theoretically, that's the direction that Tom Curler and I mm -hmm. and where and Bobby Reagan are trying yeah. to push. You said theoretically. What about the other four? Well, you got to you got to actually have them pass the stuff in order to get it. See? Are they going to do it, Steve? I think maybe. But you only got this I doubt, think this maybe. thing here. There's a big question mark. Well, there. I can't. I can't speak for him. And and if I look down the line, I'm going. I, I think maybe, maybe it's a big maybe. Wow. The best I can do. So what are they kind of thinking about? I know you guys are having these discussions. I mean, what's going to be in these, in this space, if you will? What what kind of trades are we? Paul, you can jump in on this piece. Well, what what are you looking at in terms of uh, of the kinds of trades, if you will, the careers are going to be in this space? Well, with only like, like, this Roosevelt, right? Yeah. With only 10 or 12,000 square feet, it's not going to be all of them. You might get two into two. that space. Or a couple more, maybe. Two. You like what? More. Yeah. Yeah, give give okay. me the two that you're thinking about right now. Manufacturing would be fabulous. Manufacturing. Maybe okay. electrical. Maybe metalworking. And metalworking. Shop. shop. Wood shop. Wood shop. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. now, now, as, you, as you're as putting you this got, piece together. And they've got some other things on the line, you know, like, mm -hmm. like health things yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, health trade the health trades it's not really computer trade. programming is huge but of course you can do that practically anywhere as yeah. long as you've got enough outlets okay you're okay. fine I got you well bring in Kelly <laughs> and they got the money yeah I mean <laughs> they got the money I mean rather than train training those folks outside of this country maybe they could consider training folks here Oregonians yeah citizens right? that, 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 fair? that would be fabulous fair? they got the money yeah. right Steve have you asked them for the money Intel I don't know I, I haven't personally huh? I haven't personally well, we asked get Paul and Paul and I are going to go up there and we're going to ask them for the money oh sure. that, that okay Paul we can absolutely no, no problem, do that no problem. no problem but let's let's talk a little bit more about the, the trade aspect what about the trades I mean the unions you know they are basically the the traders they're, they're the guys that basically uh, take these folks to apprenticeship and this that and the other these are the iron workers and the plumbers and all that other good stuff and whatever are they going to be involved and in possibly uh, giving up some input, if you will, to designing well, that kind I'm of classroom? I'm personally hoping that they are. We've been, we have some actual, Portland Public Schools done, has done some work on this over the past few years, but they never really did it. You know what I mean? They sat and they talked about it, and we have, we've made a lot of contacts and stuff, but we never really did it. And what we're trying to push for now on the board is to do it. To do it. Yeah, there's a whole lot of difference between talking and doing Mm -hmm. And so we want them to actually do it, and we've got to make sure the space is there, and we're mm -hmm. in those two schools to begin with to do it. Okay. So here I go again, asking the same question. Who's leading the charge at Portland Public Schools for this whole issue? Who's leading the charge? Well, there is an One actual, person? There's, a, who, there's, who, a who woman, the there's a woman who is in charge of the CTE stuff. Who is she? Is she a school teacher? Or is she part of the staff? Or you know, I don't know need? her background much, but she's she's been around for several years working on this, so she's pretty knowledgeable. Has she been in the trades? She's pretty knowledgeable. Has she been in the trades I don't know, I don't know her exact background, but I know that we've, had, we've brought Another in... Another consultant. No, she's an actual person that works, who's in charge of the CTE. But the, uh, we brought in people. I mean, they're doing, they're actually, if they would actually do what we're doing, it would work out. The question is, are they going to do what we're doing or not? I mean, we are saying, as a, as a, we're saying, yes, we want to get these things in the trades going. And we're saying, okay, we got to have space, so let's get the space. That's step one. And then, then we're going to get these people in there and, and do things if we get the space. And, and I think there's a chance that they might. Benson is pretty good. Now, we've tried to cut it down over the years. You know, we haven't treated it well. This last, we had this sports thing. They put the sports back at Benson now. But, I mean, geez, it doesn't help to go in there and tell them, oh, we're gonna, you're going to lose your football team. Why, why, why are stuff. these people fighting so hard about the trade that's big? I mean, the, who's doing all I this fight? I think part of it is that, it's, that you need equipment and you need a different types of skill set. You know, you need a, a different skill set to teach right, the right. trade stuff. Okay. And, and you also need the equipment. Originally, what had happened? Well, I know it's was, money. It's money, right? Yes, money, a lot right? of it's money. So cut administration. But a lot of it is also cut administration. A, 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 cut administration. How much are you paying for administration uh, in Portland Public not, School? You have no know. idea. No, I'll tell I will you, cut. Know. It's very simple. About, Knock it down by thirty percent. Easy well, to do. Part of the problem is right? they, can't, they can't get done what they oh. have to do now. 
Yeah, administration. I'm sure to pull stuff back. Come out administration. Yeah, I'm not sure, you know. Administration is actually very lean. That very Portland lean? Public Schools. It lean. is. It Com is lean. Comparatively. And a lot of departments, degree. an awful lot of departments there are spread unconscionably thin. Mm. Well, Paul, $12,000 but there, but but there are times X numbers. Too. But, That's a lot of money, But Paul. there yeah. is... <laughs> But there's also the fact that there's these other people out there that are kind of semi-administrators. You go out into the schools and you have maybe somebody who works with the teachers as opposed to teaches the kids. And that's a difference. So it's, if it depends on Is who that you, an issue? Yeah, it's an so issue. Why, why it depends on who it? you count. Why are we doing it? It depends on, well, it goes all the way back to the same stuff that I keep talking about in here that is such a difficult issue for everybody all the way back to Arnie Duncan and the and all the way through the State Department and then down to us that's kind of become the way to do it mm -hmm. we have this teacher we have this kind of template now mm -hmm. of how we should do education I think and and the problem with the template of how we should do it is it's not right now who's way, sharing that who's 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 bringing that to the table that comes through the fed federal government the the state government and then end us. But some individual yeah. has to say, hey, this is what we've got, this program, and then, and then define it, right? Fair? Is that uh, Carolyn I'm, Smith? I'm not following your question. No, I'm just saying, you know, someone has to say, hey, this is, what, this is something new that we have on the table. And that this, comes from the state, you mean? Right, right. And somebody says, yeah, you have to do it. But, yeah. but you have to do it under certain circumstances. Certain things you have to do. They, they tell you, you must do it this way. Yeah. And so, so the problem is not that you have to do it so much, which is a, can be a real problem, but it's how you do it. You do have choice of how to do it. Common core, do you just go nuts with it or do you bring it in in a, in a more intelligent manner? Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of involvement of people to bring it in in a more intelligent manner. What is it, what is it that works good, what doesn't, and so forth. And we don't, we're not good at involving people people, teachers, parents, community yeah, members. Yeah, we noticed that up, on the board, right? Up, <laughs> we up definitely front. noticed that, right? We're, yeah, we're not going to doing that up front. And, and in order to deal with these these things from the federal government, from the state government, so forth, we need to involve people, in, and we need to really involve them in a way that they can speak right, openly right, right. about, you know, we would be better off doing, no, we're pushing too much on this. No, we shouldn't be giving this test. We just started, did a Dibbles test, which is a, which is a test on... Uh, by uh, on reading, kind of in a reading assessment. Well, I have a lot of friends who are very, very, very good reading teachers, mm -hmm. top of the line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say Dibble's test is worthless. And then I've talked to people who say, no, the Dibble's test, I like it, it helps me. So what we do, instead of going in and saying, look, we've got the Dibble's test, here's what we think it'll do for you, do you want to use it? We've got to use it. Mm -hmm. We go in and mandate it to everybody. And it's a one-on-one -on -one test with kids. Takes your class time, but we mandate it throughout the whole system. Well, why would we do that? Yeah, but at the same time, Steve, you know for a fact that if you can't read in this country and comprehend, mm -hmm. you can't exist. The only, the only, the only exactly. graduation, and the only graduation rate you have is the criminal justice system. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it costs but, uh, us sixty some thousand dollars a head. On the Dibble stuff, the question is, does it help you read better or does it really not help you at all? Are you spending time and energy should be spent someplace else? That's the question, and, and those questions don't seem to get discussed and dealt with. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the north-northeast closure stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we did it, it didn't really get discussed up front and dealt with until everybody was fighting and stomping their feet, and that was a lot of the negotiations. A lot of the teachers holding back was over stuff like mandating the Dibbles test. Mm -hmm. Should we do that? The answer is no. We shouldn't do that. Even if some people like it, then let them use it. Mm -hmm. But there's not this. That was a huge portion of the problem that the teachers are having. But, you know, think back, just the three of us here for that matter. When we were going to school, we had to read, and it was comprehension. Mm -hmm. That was key to reading, right? Now, today, we got this so-called sophistication stuff. I mean, why are we having such a problem? We should know what it takes to successfully get a person to be able to read. Fair? Fair. And oh, you, but Bruce, oh, you, talk can't, to me, Paul. you can't make money you can't doing make it me. the way that works. <laughs> You've got to come up with something new that you can show. Oh, 
And that's where the board comes in at. See, they're supposed to be able to know. Now, Steve, I know Steve knows where it's at, so we need Yeah, I saw it, uh, uh, somebody <laughs> sent, a, sent me an email yesterday, and it had a new textbook for first graders. And the textbook was talking about the first graders being consumers and goods and products. It wasn't talking about this great literature that's out there for first graders that you could you can use to get kids reading and excited. It was this stuff that, I mean, it was so bad. I wrote a parody of it and sent it back to mm. the people. Mm. It, it, but that's, you know, we're training them to be consumers, training them to be, uh, you know, what goods are, what producers are, consumers in the first grade. And it's not... But they, not, gotta be able to, but they have to know how to work first for a living and get a job before uh, they can be a consumer. It might be a little before <laughs> they go out. Jeez. You know, 11 years before they go out to work. Jeez. I mean, it, but the point is that it, that's the new approach, and it's the wrong approach, and it's really hard to fight it. Mm -hmm. And so we buy it, go with it, because we're supposed to instead of fighting it. It's really hard to fight it. You got to go down and tell the governor he doesn't know what he's doing. We got to send our superintendent and board chair down to the governor's office and say, "Hey, we're from Portland Public Schools, the biggest district in the state, and you don't know what you're doing. You're messing up." Well, that's hard to get those people to understand to do it. For one thing, have they? Do they know the Coleman guy? Do they even, you know? They, no, the superintendent's so busy she really doesn't have time to read herself. I'll bet and to think, you know, we're so busy, 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 busy doing these things that making sure the mandates basically I have a friend who calls it, it was compliance we comply with what we're supposed to not really think in terms of what it is we want to teach in our schools and what it is we want the kids to know and okay. learn well look, let me suggest something in, in, in with reference to the trade now that is going I mean that's going around mm -hmm. there, there are trade schools if you will in, in trade and yeah there's some good stuff around Portland public schools there's some good stuff going on there's some good stuff going on I would suggest Hillsboro, one Sandy. that some folks need to co communicate with those folks then that's we've one done thing. that and we've secondly done that. as far as now. the other trades like construction and things of that nature you got the AGC Associated General Contractors they have programs that they can institute, and then there's the building and trades folks on the trade on the on the union side. They have also training programs and things that and the other that they have to comply with in certain aspect of it. I would suggest very strongly that you contact some of these folks in the early stage, if you will, to start setting some programs up. And I don't know what Benson has at this point in time, but if Benson is the they have the, some some they've got some pretty good partners. If they've got the pretty, pretty good pretty partners, partners aspect. Of it, maybe we want to duplicate yeah. it all over the state. That, that's yeah, a start. that would be good. Just duplicate it. You already know how to do it. At least a start aspect of it. And yeah. then the other thing. I'm going to throw out on the table. We've got about, about four minutes or whatever. We've got the, I had this program last week about school choice. And they talked about all kinds of choice, homeschool and online school. And, and you know, you got, you've got, what is it, uh, what's the other, what's the other, you got, you got the, uh, as far as uh, school choice, charter schools and that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And you hear all these, they were talking about the successful, if you will, the success rate. Yeah, well, I'm talking to their hat. But, then, uh, but then on the other hand, the thing that got me about the piece is that they don't get the $12,000 per kid. They get a third of that, no, they and they're also it's hey, my they understand, get a lot more than a third. It's my understanding they're required to pay their teachers mm -hmm. purge and all this, that, yeah, and the other. Yeah, yeah. Talk to me about that a little bit. About what about the school choice aspect there? Well, what are they a successful I, I, program I, I, for the schools? I, I didn't bring my fishing pole to throw out there. <laughs> well, and, what's the deal? And really, in what's the deal, Bruce? buddy? The deal is that basically <laughs> there are some positive things that you can talk about those schools. All of them. There's some positive. You know, SDI is the one want. that gets right yeah, at the top, but, you know, most successful right, in but, the state, that type of stuff. But at the same time, okay, there, when you go and actually do the study, say, on charter schools, they're no better than the public schools. And and they pick and choose. They're, I mean, Pick and choose? What do you mean? That's, that's pretty heavy. There's kids you get to take. I'll take this kid in the end, but we'll throw yeah. this kid out. He's gone. I mean, there's a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Poor, Oregon has not become this charter school mecca. Basically, a lot of it is built around, and it's not accurate, and it's built around privatizing the schools. Mm -hmm. You go into other areas of the country. Oregon hasn't quite got into it yet. You go into other areas of the country, it's built on privatization of the schools. They come in with these claims of these wonderful claims when you investigate them. Yeah, there's good charter schools, but there's terrific public schools. Lincoln High School, mm -hmm. one of the better in the country, I'll bet you. You know what I'm saying? Benson, at one point, is probably the top technological school in the country. 
You can't. You come in with these claims, and the claims, when you really get down into them, in terms of why they, they don't. Are. No, not in terms of why. In terms of actually the claims being accurate, okay. and they're not okay. necessarily accurate. Okay. And, and school choice mm -hmm. is is no place in the country has school choice worked. Mm -hmm. What school choice or the online the online schools? The online schools are huge failures all over the place. We don't talk about that, and. Even they're probably talking about uh, homeschooling. Homeschooling can be great if you're under certain circumstances, but I had some people who I know homeschooled their kid and never gave, told them one thing ever the whole time, just kept home. State didn't, didn't do a good job of monitoring it, by the yep. way. And so all those things, it's a huge show, but there's underlying. I suggest that people really wanted to get in that, they read a little bit of the new Diane Ravage book where she lays out that those programs are no better than the public schools themselves necessarily. Well, I think we're going to do, we can get you guys together. we got about another minute and a half. We're going to give Paul an opportunity. He's going to give the, he's going to give give the closing statement. What do you think? You, we've been having this discussion. What do you think about this? the school board? we got the school board here. Now, what do oh, you think? Yeah. Are we going to be able to do it? Oh, yeah, we're going to be able to do it. We're absolutely going to be able to do it. We've got Steve. We okay. can do anything. Okay. We've got Tom Curler. We've got Bobby Regan. We can do anything. Good, good. Paul, you need to run for school board. You look Thank like you. someone with a good background and, uh, you know, and what you're saying and the way you're reacting. In fact, the Steve and whatever, I think it makes good sense because we really need change. We really need, if in fact we're going to meet the goal, if you will, of making sure that we get these kids in a productive manner. Yeah. Because we've got some major problems. And I know Steve says this all the time, and, but he needs some support. We've got major problems, but we've got some stuff that works beautifully. Okay. We've got fabulous teachers. Mm -hmm. We've got some top-notch principles but they can't We've teach got, you got the well, administration is cutting them off i mean yeah to some degree well, that's true yeah that is true <laughs> but we got great stuff to work with we got great stuff to build on it's a great fabulous city. this programs. is a great city portland's yep. a great city we should have oh the, yes we should have hey. the best schools in the country you know we used to say that right back oh, in yeah, the 80s much so. we had very the number so. one very much so. very we had the best so. schools of any big city in america we used to say that i wouldn't well, say that I'll now but what, i don't tell, know tell carolyn to come over here and have a seat right here next to me would you please can you bring her here to talk with us i doubt if she'll come <laughs> why won't she i don't know i'm a taxpayer just tell her that call i'm a taxpayer her call her up call, call, call? Yeah, doctor call her and ask her if she'll come on See, oh, well, tell you know, well you know now these days you know i don't know well anyway gentlemen it's been a pleasure Steve, as usual, always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. And I Paul, enjoy thank being you here. for bringing oh, on board. Great. And consider that what we just talked about. Thank you. All right. Good thank enough. you very much. Folks, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, folks, here we are again. Join us next week. Again, uh, Mr. Baruti is going to be here next time around. Okay. Give us a call. Bruce Broussard. See you next week. Take care. <laughs>